All right, Oklahoma Bridges here again, and um, shifting gears, uh, literally, we're going to take a look at uh, a bicycle hub here. Um, I bought this several years ago to go on a Schwinn Typhoon that I picked up at the uh, Katusa show in um, 2013 or 2014. Um, there's a pretty good swap meet area, usually at the... Um, Route 66 Flywheelers Katusa show every year, and uh, I picked up a nice early 60s Schwinn Typhoon, single speed coaster brake rear, and I decided it would be nice to have a lower gear for hills, so I've heard about these hubs, so I got on eBay and found one. This is a Bendix two-speed automatic. And what makes it automatic is there's no shifting cable on it. What you do is you would normally back pedal to brake. And on this one, instead of going all the way back and braking, you just go back about 90 degrees and forward. And each time you do that, it switches from either low gear to high gear or from high gear to low gear. There's an indexing mechanism, a sequencer really, that uh, alternates it, which is what it's going to be each time. And so therefore you have in one unit a two-speed gear and a brake. And it's a very interesting um, unit overall. Um, Bendix made a couple variations of these. Uh, before this model, they did make a unit that had a push rod that stuck in the end, and then there was a uh, bell crank similar to what is used on the Shimano uh, multi speed hubs with a toggle and then a link that went to a handlebar control, and then the coaster brake operated as normal with the two shoes. So for Bendix's first version of this, the red band version, the brake shoes are arranged like they would be in a new departure hub with discs. And so there are a stack of discs at this end of the hub that alternate. Uh, every other disc is keyed to the um, reaction piece that has the um, brake arm keyed to it, and then every other disc in between those is keyed via splines to the shell of the hub. And when you pedal backwards, the screw thread runs it over, and it compresses the discs together and gives you braking. And then, of course, when you pedal forwards, the screw thread... Um, runs it that way and it locks against the hub shell and it does that in either high or low gear and so I'll use a little stand here made out of some cloth electrical tape set the hub up like that where I can rotate it by hand so you can see okay we are in high gear here you can see the holes where the spokes are that the sprocket and the hub are rotating in unison. Now they are rotating in low gear. You can see very clearly that the sprocket is overrunning the hub. And I haven't worked out what the exact ratio is, but it's I'm thinking something like 30% decrease. And that clicking you hear is the indexing mechanism. So, very interesting. Uh, this automatic version, Bendix made three versions. There's the first version, the red band version that you see here. And then later they made, they discontinued this, and they made a yellow and a blue band version. 
The yellow band version is the same general setup as this, except that it uses the shoe type brakes that Bendix is known for in their other brakes. The blue version is an overdrive and it would be meant for uh, bicycles with 16 or 20 inch wheels like um, a folding bicycle for example or the Schwinn Stingray style bikes that were also popular at the time it was manufactured and uh, a better example would be on the folding bike it would give you a, a um, low gear which is direct drive which with the small wheels would would make a very good low gear and then with the overdrive it would make a, a good overdrive gear for a full-size rider on a bicycle with 16 or 20 inch wheels so I'm going to break this video in the parts I'm going to disassemble this now and reassemble it without the hub shell so that you can see the internal workings to see how it works. So that will be part two of the video. So I will see you in part two.